are he receiving your word, let healing come. Let breakthrough come. Let deliverance come. Let prosperity come to them. Let the finger of the enemy over their life be broken. And let Jesus and Lord be glorified in their lives. Bring light into all these various souls. And Jesus be magnified. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Glory be to Jesus. Please be seated. Please be seated in his awesome blessed presence. We give God all the praise. We give God all the praise. We give God all the praise. So, just like we started last week talking about the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God. And today, you know, the wisdom of God is everything. Amen. Amen. The wisdom of God is everything because the Bible even makes us to understand that God, by wisdom, made everything. So everything we see, physically speaking, is the product of the wisdom of the Most High, Elohim, Adonai, Jehovah. The, the manifestation of his wisdom is what we see around us. So when you see the ocean, when you see the sea, you are looking at the wisdom of God. When you see the mountains, you are looking at the wisdom. When you lift up your eyes and you see the sky, the blue skies and, and the moon and the star and the sun, you are looking at the wisdom of God. When you look at the land, and, and you look at the landscaping, and, and especially if you are somebody that travels to fly around a lot, and, and you look through the window. I mean, I know many of you, when you travel, you don't want to sit by the window, you know, because uh, uh, some of you have problems with heights. Uh, somebody told me anytime he's flying, when he gets on board, he makes sure he will sleep before they will take off. And by the time he opens the eyes, they have landed. You know, so all those, and I know there's nobody here like that. If you are here, be delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. So you look through the window and you will see all sorts of things. All those things are the manifestations of the wisdom of the Most High. Amen. Amen. The wisdom of the Most High. And um, let me quickly today touch on something that is so important. And what I'm going to be saying, I've been saying it many, many times. And the Spirit of God is really, really communicating, you know, to me on this thing. Because it is one of the things that when we do, we automatically connect with the Spirit of Wisdom. With the Spirit of Wisdom. You know, there are people that God is looking out for. Just like the Bible says, the eyes of God is moving to and fro. Looking for those whose heart are perfect towards Him. Not looking for those who just go to church. It's good to go to church. But God is looking for those whose heart are perfect, those whose heart are yearning for God. Because there are many people that go to church and their heart is not after God. You understand? They are in church because of what they want God to do for them. They are in church because they are afraid of the devil. So they will go to church so that when we pray, uh, some sort of security, the devil cannot touch them. Some also go to church because they want to meet friends. Some also go to church because they want to show off. They bought some new clothes or some car that, you know, they have to drive it to church for everybody to know, you know, and, and all those things. So those people that want to display their new Lamborghinis and Mercedes and all those things, one of their tricks is that when we close from church, they don't go early. You know, they work at the parking lot. You know, because if they drive away, how would you know? You know, so they have to make sure they spend some time there for everybody to come around. And when, when you get to the parking lot and you are not looking at their direction, they will call you. Hi, Fred, how are you? You know, God bless this week. Maybe he just wants you to look at his direction to see the car. You know, I mean, we have all these kinds of people in the church. You know, so we have various reasons why we go to church. Hallelujah. Yeah. But the good thing is, it is good to be in church. Amen. Amen. And when I say church, I'm talking about the house of the Holy Ghost. Because today we have many places that we call church and they are satanic sanctuaries. I, I told somebody, the place that, unfortunately, today, the places that we have to be careful about are the places that are called churches. It's unfortunate, but that's the truth. You understand? Some churches are just satanic sanctuaries. And, and, and people don't know. They think anything that called church or anything that has somebody called a prophet or a pastor is God. You know, and they don't know what is going on spiritually. But here the Bible is saying, the eyes of God is going wrong looking for those whose hearts are pursuing him. Those whose hearts are perfect. The word perfect 
there is not talking about being sinless or faultless. No. It would be unfair for God to be looking for that same kind of heart as long as you are in this flesh. You understand? But the word perfect then means those whose hearts are yearning to please the Lord. You understand? They are yearning to please Him. They are yearning to do what is pleasing to the Lord. Like David said, search my heart, O Lord. If there is anything in me, in my heart, that is not right before you remove it. You see a very smart person. You, you understand? And so, these are the people God's eyes are moving around looking for. Hallelujah. And so, the scripture that became Fred read, uh, Psalm 91, uh, it's, 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 it's amazing, you know, how that, um, when we get to verse 14 in Psalm 91, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will, uh, will I deliver him and set him on high. Say a big hallelujah. hallelujah. You understand? Because he has set his love, not because he went to church, it's good to go to church. Not because he's pray, he prayed, he's good to pray. But there is something God does for some specific people because of something they did. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him and I will set him on high because he loves me. You, you understand what I'm saying? Precious one, if you come to understand the power, the mystery, the benefit of completely loving God as if you have, don't have brains, ha, may the Holy Ghost help us. You understand? Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. Let me tell you something here. We have some people that they are always in church. Praise God for that. They are committed to everything. Praise God. They can pray hours every day. Praise God. But you never see the proof of God's hand in their life. You understand? Let me tell you something, precious one. There are some things that happen in the lives of only those that are genuinely in love with God. It is good to pray. But if all the prayer does not make you genuinely love God, you are wasting your time. You understand? It's good to be in church, but if all that you are doing in church is not because of your heart for God, it's almost like you are wasting your time. That, that's the bitter truth, but that's the truth. Heart for God, because He has loved me, I delivered Him. I will set him on high because he has loved me. Romans 8 26 put it in uh, Romans 8 28 puts it in a very profound way. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord. All things. You can't help somebody who is genuinely in love with God. He may go through challenges, but because of his heart for God, God will be so glorified in his life that the devil will regret bringing those challenges his way. Because of his love for God. You understand? Just like the Kifred was saying earlier on. Abraham said, Sarah is my sister. The king said, oh, I'm in love with your sister. I can imagine the things the king gave to Abraham at once. Brother, you love. You understand? They put Abraham in the in the in the presidential suite in the in the palace because he's the brother in law to the king. But his heart was pumping more blood. <laughs> and he, 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 you know Abraham told Sarah, if he asks you, just tell him you are my sister. So I can imagine the king and Sarah sitting down in a very romantic mood, and he said, "Oh." I like your brother, he's, he's a nice guy. And Sarah said, Oh, yeah, so my brother, he said, I mean, he, he just pictured that. You understand? And do you know what Sarah herself also went through? Thinking of a man that is not her husband going to touch her, and she can't say no. Hey, don't go with fear. You have no idea what fear makes people do. You understand? And so, the king did nothing wrong. But because of Abraham's heart for God, 
God said, no way. I don't let my lover suffer like this. So God comes to the king. Hey, 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 you're already dead. Ah, God, dead? What did I do? He said, full stop. Don't, don't make one more step forward. Take the woman back to the husband. He said, ah, God, are you confused? That's the sister. You see, when God talks, the man is challenging. You see how funny it is. For making my lover, Abraham, to suffer like this, you are not just taking Sarah back. You take Sarah back with compensation. But the bottom line is, physically or logically looking through the whole situation, the king did nothing wrong. It was not Abraham that is at fault, but God came to his defense. You understand? I will deliver him because he loves me. And I will set him on high. You know how we have read the Bible says, within the power of God, is that within the hand of God is the power to do all. To make great and to make small. To make to set high and to bring low. To prosper and to make poor. Within the power of the hand of God. And God said, now because you love me, I will set you on high. Now wait a minute. When God decides to set you on high, can any devil stop that? No. So you know what the devil will do? He will make sure you don't love God. Because the devil knows the moment you genuinely begin to walk in love with God. God will set you on high. There are things God will let happen in your life. You don't need to work for it. There are people God will move on them and they will do things for you in your life. I mean, people, God will move on people to work for you to be wealthy. That is where God brings you to a, a, a realm of wealth and you yourself cannot explain how you got there. Because it's not by your doings, it's by the hand of God. He decided that I will set you on high because you love me. Precious God, uh, precious people, the things I'm beginning to understand about God is almost like if you don't love God, don't even waste your time going to church. You understand? There are many stupidity in churches. Stupid things going on every Sunday. We gather, we sing, we make noise, we do all kinds of things. But nasty, disgusting character, selfishness, materialism, we are so carnal that even the reason we pray is because we want some material things. That's the motivation for prayer. So we are missing the real things which are spiritual. You understand? I come to check, I see Sister Yvonne wearing a beautiful pink suit. No way. And I know, I know how much they sell it. I've seen it. I saw it in a certain distance more in downtown. And, and what she's wearing is about $8,000. What? I came to church before her. <laughs> I'm even committed more than her. I work, my job is bigger than her. I give more than her. No way. Next week, I must also wear blue. A blue suit that is costing fifty thousand, and so this week prayer and fasting. Come and see. You you see the stupidity in churches. This this you see when we gather together, that how the Bible describes Mount Zion. Why are we not experiencing? Because the people that have gathered together, their hearts that have gathered before God, is just that God is merciful. You understand? God is merciful. Like the King Fred even said, jokingly, there is somebody who is sitting in church right now, and after church, what he's going to do to somebody? He only told the person, wait, I'm just going to check when I get back and see that. Now I'm holding because I'm going to church. After church, I'm, I'm natural. <laughs> you understand? The heart for God. The heart for God because He has set His love upon me. And then your heart for God is proven in what you do. Remember the message that by the Holy Ghost I brought to the church? What you do.
do is powerful than your prayers. What you do, you want to know somebody who loves God. Don't just watch their prayer life, watch what they do. You understand? Watch what they do. The Bible was talking about in the last days the kind of heart that men will have. And one thing that the other guy was discussing that with my wife. One of the things God said that I'm so mindful of. He said they'll be lovers of pleasure for the world. They love, they will spend money to have pleasure. And when they see a need in God's house, they don't care. Lovers of pleasure more than God. We love the parties. Some people even love funerals more than church. Oh, yes. I know somebody that told me, he mentioned somebody to me, that every Friday he'll be calling friends. Is there any funeral anywhere? Funeral hunting. They, they are just looking for a funeral because when you go there, there's all kinds of dressings, and hopefully I will get the husband, or I will get the wife, or I will meet somebody that will flow with me. And also, I just bought some new clothes, and, and I must take it there. Or a car. You see, all kinds of nonsense and stupidity. The stupid, if I begin to talk about the stupidity of man, you are going to take you home. You understand? It's just God's mercy and grace. You know, so all these things are going on in churches. And people don't know that all these are satanic influence. When people are so much under the influence of carnality, when you preach, the servant of God shall which speaks like this, they hate him in their heart. Because what you are saying is not consistent with their lifestyle. And they are not ready to change. They just want the church to be like a fun fair. Lovers of pleasure are more than lovers of God. There are people that will spend thousands of money on birthdays and other occasions. And they come to church with $20, $50. And they are shouting, God bless us. God, precious one, listen. There are those that will never say, God bless me. And yet, everywhere they are, they go, blessings are following them. Because of what they do. What You have to be so <laughs> conscious of that. What you do, like Jesus said, my father that sent me is always with me because I always do. Nobody prayed more than Jesus, yet he never referred to his prayer life but what he did. <laughs> Our prayer life is supposed to empower us to do what is pleasing to God. You, you understand what I'm saying? And so if we are praying and what we do is not pray, uh, pleasing to God, we are praying nonsense. That's the truth. You understand? What motivates your prayer is very wrong. Selfish attitude, carnal attitude, material, ma ma material oriented minded people blowing in tongues for hours. But the eyes of God is looking for those who sat are perfect to a sin. And because he loves me, I will deliver him. That means you are in trouble if you go against somebody who is genuinely in love with God. You are in big trouble because God has promised I will deliver him. So you go and see what will happen. You collide with the hand of the most high. Can you stand that? Whether evil spirit or whether humans, evil human, you understand? Whoever comes against anyone that is in genuinely, genuinely, who is in genuinely in love with God, God has decreed, I will deliver the person. So, if God says I'll deliver, and you are going after that person, are you not in trouble? Mm -hmm. And God said, I will not just deliver, I will also send him where? On high. That is when this scripture begins to fulfill in our lives. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are the lender and not borrower. These things are made manifest in our lives according to our heart for God. I will set him on high. I will. So don't read that scripture and then go blowing in tongue. God says he will set me on high. And God says, you see, we skip the line he has set because he has set his heart. Love of me. We, we don't want that one. But we want, I will deliver him and I will set him. So we, we pick that verse out of the whole contest. 
and we begin to pray. That's nonsense. That's foolishness. You understand? You can pray it the whole year, January to February, nothing will happen. Because the condition must be fulfilled. That blessing is not triggered necessarily by prayer. There is a condition in your heart for God. So my admonition to everyone and our pray, the precious people watching me is that no matter the situation you find yourself in, no matter who is against you, no matter what is going on now, receive grace to genuinely love the Lord. Amen. 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 We all like the psalm that David wrote. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Please, please, please. I love you with every drop of blood in me and I will speak the truth always to you. It is not automatic. It doesn't happen because you are confessing it. It is good to confess it. Like we do every day. You understand? But the man who wrote it by the Holy Ghost said, as the dear panthers after the waters, so my soul longed after thee, O Lord. I would rather be a servant, to paraphrase it, I would rather be a servant in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked or the rich. It is so important when somebody is genuinely in love with God. God sent his prophet Isaiah, the prophet whose words don't fall to the ground. Send him to Hezekiah, tell him, prepare, you are dying. If God tells you you will die, can you change it? Can anybody deliver you from it? The most are Elohim have spoken. You are going to die. And in the book of uh, Isaiah 38, and verse number 3, the Bible says Hezekiah turned his eyes to the wall and listened to the prayer he prayed. He said, God, I beseech thee, consider how I have walked before thee and have done that which is good. So you see, he was not capitalizing on what he did. If it were you, would you be able to pray that prayer? You will say, Father, consider how every Sunday I go to church, and if it sometimes leads. That's, how you, that's the only thing, you, because you can't stand before the Almighty and tell us. He already knows it. He, you, you see, the good thing is God has to ask questions because he knows everything. If God asks you question, he's proving you to yourself. But Hezekiah said, God, consider what I have done because of my heart for you. God said, son, you are right. The prophet, Isaiah, go back. Tell him. Isaiah said, God, this is prophet Isaiah you are talking to. When I decree, when I prophesy, it is settled. It doesn't fall. He said, this one has fallen already. Go back. And tell him I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Do you think God did not know what Ezekiah said? God already knew it. But God created these circumstances to teach you a life lesson. You understand? God, consider what I have done. Consider what I have done because of my heart. He didn't do it because he wanted to show off, but it was whatever he did was motivated by his love for God. In that of the apostles, a lady dies. And the whole church wanted to break down because one lady has died. Before her, many ladies have died. Nobody cared. Because whether they are alive or dead, it makes no difference. But this particular one died. They said, no way. Let's go and call the apostle Peter. Peter comes around. He sees how everybody is. He said, Peter said, well, what? You people have seen a dead person before? They say, no, 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 Apostle. It's not about just a dead person. But you see, you see this church on the Toro. She bought it. You see the carpet in the church. She put it there. You see the church bus. He, he bought it. You see the pastor's mansion. He bought it for the pastor. You see the pastor. He uh, 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 gave money to the pastor every month for his help. Peter said, wait, wait, wait. You mean she did all this? They say, yes. Peter said, uh -huh. this one must come back. This one is not easy to replace. 
You understand? It's, it's true that nobody can be indispensable in the house of God, but there are some people, they are close to being indispensable. This one must come back. And the Bible says the man of God cried unto God, and life came back into the dead body. Now, do you think after her, nobody died again? Why did they, why did they send for Peter? Please, out of your heart for God, you can make yourself so relevant that heaven will recognize it. So that anybody, any devil that make any attempt on you, the whole heaven will react. The whole heaven, you ask, you see, you don't know you can be that kind of a person. There are some people on earth, you, why do you think God said there are some of you before you pray about them? There are some people on earth that heaven is like heaven have put a uh, surveillance camera on them. The eyes of heaven is following them everywhere. They are so relevant to God's agenda on earth. The purpose why Jesus died, they are living for the purpose for which Jesus died and rose again. They are not living for this world. They are not living for things. Yes, God will bless us with things to make it easy and comfortable for us to serve his purposes. But the things of this world are not the reason why they get up and move up and down and they get a job and they are making investment so that they will be millionaires and do this and do that. Come on, precious one. Yes, when God brings you into that realm, there are a lot of things that you will enjoy. There is nothing wrong with that. But then, if that becomes the motivation or the reason why you are living, then you've made the mark. You understand what I'm saying? And God is bringing all these things to us because precious one, let me tell you, in the world, it's going to be very rough. God forbid, I'm not a prophet of truth, but that's what the Bible has predicted. It's going to be chaotic, very, very rough. But in the midst of that, God said, my light will shine on those that love me. That is why Romans 8 said, all things, no matter the situation, everything will work together for good to them that love the Lord. Amen. Amen. It is so important for us to understand that. So important. And so, we don't just read Psalms. It's good to read Psalms. It's very powerful. You understand? And, and then the Psalms that David wrote, we have to understand the heart with which he wrote it. Why the Holy Ghost inspired him to write all those things. And the reason why God looks at this man and said, this is a man after my own heart. And Jesus came and called himself the son of David. Do you know that, that level of honor? Eh? Jesus, the son of David. How do you feel if Jesus came now and he said, I'm the son of Fred? And Jesus was walking and somebody said, now son of Fred. He said, aha, yes, what you want. It means he, he, he admitted, he accepted that name. Thou son of David. He said, yes. Jesus, have you forgotten about Moses? Abraham? They did not kill anybody to take their wife. This man, what he did, are you not even ashamed to be called the son of David? Thou son of David. And I told you when I took time to study about this guy, and the only thing God showed me about David is his heart for God. I'm telling you, if you want to talk about someone who loves God, you are talking about David. In all his weakness, in his stupidity, in his shortcomings, don't touch his heart for God. Don't touch his heart. And that is what God is looking for. You understand? So, when God was looking for a king after Saul had disappointed him, the Bible, God said, I have found David. I have found David. He was looking for it. I have found David. My, even before David would start serving God, God already called him my servant. Because he saw that heart in him. You understand? He saw that heart in him. Love. Love. Look at what David said in the book of Psalm 132 from verse number 5. I will not give sleep to my eyes. Are you stupid? Neither will I give a slumber to my eyes until I do this for my God. How can a man put himself under such situation? You understand? It does not literally mean that he wasn't going to sleep. 
But what he was going to, what David was saying is that I will never rest. I won't do anything in this life. I won't buy car, I won't buy house, I won't even buy clothes or new shoes for myself until I have done this. May God bless us with that kind of heart. Amen. We are living in a modern world that makes you look foolish when you love the Lord like that. You have friends around you that make you think you are stupid for loving God. Because you are not doing what they are doing. You are not buying the clothes. Why are you using your money? Everything, all your money, check, check, check. And your shoe, for two, three years, you haven't changed your shoe. Are you not a woman? Your makeup is so cheap because you are always giving your money to the church. And Pastor Trump is enjoying the money. I was discussing something with somebody. I said, I don't know what devil make people think when you bring money to the church. It's for the pastor's pocket. You understand? So they go like, you, you are giving your money to the pastor. You are giving your, who, what? Come on. The point is, God ordained it. That is what God says. Paul said, don't you know God has ordained that those that God has called to preach the gospel, they live by it. So if I have been of a spiritual blessing to you, is it too much for me to bring uh, physical? So it is ordained by God that as a servant blesses you spiritually, it is your responsibility to bless him physically. A great man of God was teaching a mystery behind that, and I don't want to talk about it now. You understand? He said, you don't know what you are doing to yourself when you sit in the house of God and you haven't been a blessing to the pastor in your life physically. And you think it is all right, and you are still praying. He said, you are a joke. Stop the prayer. What you do is what God responds to it. Not just the prayer. What you do. What you do. What you do. Somebody, some of you can come into a challenging situation. And you'll be praying and praying and praying that it will be like God is not hearing you. But the day you boldly stand before God and say, Father, you know that I'm the person that stands with your servant child financially. This cannot go on because it will disturb me. It will disturb what I do. It's like, and you'll be sure God will, re God will respond immediately. You see, we don't understand spiritual keys. So we, we religiously do things. You understand? Religiously do things. Somebody's son was sick. And the doctor said that is it. This boy will die. The lady knelt beside the bed. And before she could open the mouth, he said, God's voice came to her and said, Dora, get up. Your son will come home because you are the one that stands with my servant. Just like that. What you do. Don't joke with it. And so when the devil is attacking what you do for the servant of God in your life, don't think uh, you are being smart. It is an attack trying to rob you of the blessings that must come to you. You understand? God's plan for his servant will move on with or without you. But it is just like um, Mordecai told Esther. Who knows that maybe for a time like this, that's why God put you there. But whether you do it or not, God will raise it from somewhere else. You understand? God will raise it from somewhere else. And so, David was somebody that when it comes to God, hey, you know we've never talked about how David took care of the prophets of God. Hey, you don't know what David did when he came to the prophets of God. When David really wrote that, yes, you are a genuine prophet of the Most High. Even your shoe, he will, he will ordain people that will be punishing your shoe. That was David for you. Anything God, David doesn't joke with it. But today, what foolishness, what devil, like Paul told the church of Galatians, who has been bewitched you? Somebody give five hundred dollars to the pastor and he start going around I'm the one taking care of the pastor I'm the one that gave oh you see pastor was wearing new shoe today he, last week I gave him three hundred dollars that's why he went and bought that shoe <laughs> and you say all kinds of things and you don't know it's it's an insult on the hand of God on that servant making you look like you are the one that takes care of him but let me tell you something any blessing physically that comes from you 
to the servant of God is a spiritual transaction to open a blessing door into your life. Amen. Amen. When Elijah ate the food of that woman, who benefited? Elijah just ate one meal, but the woman never, food never ran out of her house for the rest of her beautiful life. That's right. But if you look at the situation, it will look like she was rather helping Elijah, or Elijah was weak. How can you look at the poor woman and the only man and, and, and you, the, the, to make matters well, this little boy who is hungry, and you say, forget about the boy, bring it to me, a full grown man, bedded, and, and I should eat. But how wicked can you be? <coughs> I thought you said you were a servant of God. You understand? It's just like I, I, I will go to the and I say, hey, How much do you have in your account? And the stomach will stop you rolling. <laughs> Should I tell the truth or not? <laughs> so let's say she has 200,000. Say, I should say I have only five. Because the way I'm looking at pastor's eyes, <laughs> it's up to something. <laughs> but eventually, she got it carried and said, I have 200,000 dollars. I said, okay, write a check of 200,000 dollars for me. She would say, pastor, I, I decided to stay in this church, but I think from today, <laughs> I changed my mind. <laughs> if, if this is what it takes, do you know how long it took for me? And do you know the plans I have? You may have plans, but the Bible says man proposes, but it is God that does what? That's right. You can plan everything. <laughs> until God's hand is in it. It's a joke. And any time God specifically demands something from you, start dancing. Unless you don't know God. But when God specifically demands something, start dancing. You understand? So your heart for God. Your heart for God. And one of the beautiful things about loving God is that when you love God, you remember, you know the Bible says, God is love, right? In the book of our first John 4, and from verse number 8, God is love. And so when you get born again, the first thing the world must see in you is the nature of God, which is love. The world responds to love more than power. Yes. The reason why it's hard for us to draw people to Christ is because we are not touching them with the love of Christ. You understand? The world is not waiting for power. They are waiting for somebody to show them love. It's just like politics. We give political power to politicians. They look at what they do to people. When somebody has power without love, he's a dangerous person. When the man of God is anointed and the love of God is not in him, no go near him. You understand? And so, when we get born again, the first thing we must strive to, to manifest is the nature of God, which is love. The way 1 Corinthians 13 describes the character of love, look at yourself in the mirror of that scripture. It doesn't envy, it doesn't boast, it doesn't really. And so when you find yourself envying, it means you don't have love. He does not use his mouth to destroy people. So when you, somebody comes to you and says, you see, oh, you travel. You people don't know him. That's why you sit down for him to preach. That guy, this, when the person is talking, if you are spiritually sensitive, you run away from that person. Because you are listening to somebody who is not, who doesn't have love. And so it's two things. Either it's love or hatred. You, you understand? Even if the person is the Pope, forget it. You understand? You don't use your mouth to destroy people. Don't use your mouth to mess people's life. Don't destroy people's image, character. Like I said something, somebody would have married, but because another person said something. Somebody would have gotten that job, but because somebody said something. And yet on Sunday, we all congregate in church. How stupid can we be? 
Who are we following? God or the devil? You do things that is pleasing to the devil, then Sunday you come and dance in the church that you are serving God. These are the truth. The people, God is ready to glorify Himself, but the characters are wrong. Mm. The nature is wrong. I'm born again. I have the nature of God. And so the nature of God is love. And so what people must see in me is love. I deal with people on the basis of love, no matter what anybody does. And so if you do something and I don't like and I tell you you are stupid, I'm telling you you are stupid because I love you. So you change. If I know you are thief, and I don't tell you you are thief. Is that love? No. no. I'm not a politician that is lying and coining words. So that you stole the thing. Instead of saying you stole, you say I took. There are two different. It's one thing to steal and it's another thing to take. You understand? Those are the ones that say I, I misspoke. We are the children of God. The nature of God is in us. The nature of God is love. God is love. And so everything we do must be motivated by love. And the world, unbelievers, are looking for love, not power. And if we are going to receive that nature, if we're going to let that nature of God flow through us, which is love, I'm telling you, the devil will be crippled. And so the devil who knows this secret is making sure that people that go to church will never exhibit the love of Christ. So even in church, we are careful with each other. You see the nonsense that goes on in churches? That uh, uh, we, 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 we take what? Some money. Uh, we, we, everybody pays this amount. So that when your loved one passes, then we all come and support because you are part of this group, and what devil introduced that to the church? And so if somebody did not get, did not have money to be part of it, when somebody passes, what happened? We don't know him. You are on your own. And you call that love? You call that the Holy Ghost? You call that Christ? Why did you see that in the church? We have allowed kinda satanic pastors to introduce all kinds of things into churches and it has been accepted and it has opened the way for the devil to get into the church and so all kinds of stupidity in churches look at the youth in the church look at you can't even draw a line of demarcation between the youth in the church and the youth in the world and we boast about we have youth ministry you have youth nonsense how is that affecting your life how is that manifesting Christ in them? You understand? We have youth ministry. Yet if we did the youth ministry, look at all these disgusting things, sleeping with each other, smoking, drinking, and, and the pride of challenging the authenticity of God. When the young ones want to drink, they come up with a stupid question. If, if alcohol is not good, why did Jesus tell water into wine? <coughs> Height of stupidity. Did Jesus tell uh, what time to alcohol? You understand? Somebody asked, I said, if you are not stupid, and if, if you are not so kind of that in your heart, God knows you are already drinking, and you are looking for scriptures to, to, to justify what you are doing. You understand? But if you read that scripture, when they gave that one to the governor, what did the governor say? He said, why have you kept the good wine and uh, 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 let them drink the bitter one first? So there were two different types of wine. One was sweet, one was not sweet. Have you seen sweet alcohol before? Those of you that have enjoyed it before. You understand? Somebody told me, you know, those of us from Ghana, there is a, this alcoholic beverage called appetition. He said, have you seen anybody drinking that petition and smiling before? <laughs> you can't smile after drinking that petition. Once you pour it into your throat, your face that becomes something else. <laughs> you understand? And yet we have young ones out of pride. Instead of humbling themselves and learning, they are engaged with people in the world doing all kinds of things and they now want to use scriptures to justify that nonsense. May God have mercy on us.
and yet pastors are pastoring them, watching them, and because they come to church, you pride yourself with our youth ministry, we have 500 people. Praise God for that. But how many of them will be raptured if it should happen now? Mm. How many? God is just merciful to us. And when you are under the influence of the devil, one of the proof is that you hate the truth. When truth is spoken, you hate it. You hate the servant God uses to speak the truth. You don't want to be around that person. Because what he says makes you uncomfortable because of your lifestyle. Why do you think people walk away from Jesus? Can you imagine that? Jesus, the son of the most, are full of the Holy Ghost. <coughs> Without measure. And he spoke and people walk away. Because they did not like what he said. Does he mean Jesus was wrong? No. You understand? So when we, when we are talking about love, we must affect people. Now, listen, I'm, all this thing I'm saying, I'm not saying it for the sense of condemnation. God forbid. I don't believe in condemning anyone. But what the awareness I'm trying to create here is that don't let us call light darkness and darkness light to people. It's dangerous. If they are wrong, let them know they are. Don't condemn them, but let them know it is wrong. You can receive grace to change. But don't let them feel it is all right. You understand? Just like we have some pastors that because of money and, and, and greedy for material things, they will sit down and say hey, that uh, everybody will go to heaven because God loves everyone. Then why do you have to get born again? Then why do you have to live the righteous life? God loves everyone, so let's fool around and then at the end of the day we all end up in heaven. Somebody said, if, if God is love, why, why would he take some people to, to hell or the lake of fire? And I told him, God is not taking anybody to hell or the lake. Anybody that goes to the lake of fire is their own choice. God never, ever, and will never send anybody there. That is why he sent Jesus Christ to come and die. The death and resurrection and the salvation Jesus brought is an escape route from the lake of fire. God prepared the lake of fire, but not for human beings, for the devil and his demonic angels that stood with him. But the Bible says because of stubbornness, that is why some people will go there. And so it's a choice. God is not the one sending people there. Some people have chosen to be there by refusing to accept Jesus Christ, the only savior of the world, the only son of God, the only one that died and rose again and paid the price for our sins. The Bible says when you refuse him, then you have chosen to end up in the lake of fire. It is only Jesus that is the way, the truth, and the life. If it is not Jesus, you are lost. If it is not Jesus and you pass away, the Bible says you will end up in the lake of fire. This is not how we say it. This is what the Bible says. And God has spoken. It is written. It is settled. It cannot be broken. Amen. 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 It's so important. Loving God. Loving God. And quickly let me say this before I end. One of the proof or one of the major area of loving God is getting addicted to promoting his kingdom on earth. That is it. And I'm telling you, precious when the Holy Ghost spoke these things to me. Kingdom addicted believers. You live for his kingdom. Every, the kingdom of God, you have placed the kingdom of God above everything in your life. Oh yes, yeah, there are people like that. There are people that they think, they plan, they do everything on the kingdom. The church, God's church where God has planted them. That is their thought. That is their planning. That is their motive. Everything they do, their whole life is secondary to them. And God looks at certain people. He said, hey, I will place you on high. Because I know if I give you a billion dollars, it will save my kingdom. You understand? And sometimes God proves us to ourselves. You know how when somebody that he has money, he can make all kinds of promises. Oh, Father, if I get money, I'm telling you, I'm going to buy an auditorium for CBC that will sit 5,000. And, and I'm going to buy 15 buses. And God says, 
God looks into your heart and he laughs. He says, okay, uh, let's, let's do this. And then God gives you one million. The moment one million comes, he says, ah, that house I saw at the, uh, at the lake shore, when I checked, it was 850. And then we say, God, you see, I, when I, after this house, eh, ah, after this house, your house is the next. <laughs> And then God is saying, you see who you are? I just, I know what is in your heart, but I wanted to prove it to yourself. That's why I put that in your hand. You understand? Hannah had prayed and prayed and prayed. Nothing happened. Until when they went to Shiro. And this time around, and remember, they have been going to Shiro every year. But this time around, she did something different. When they were feasting, people drinking and having good time, he separated himself and went to the prayer altar. She poured her heart out. And listen, people think it's because she separated that's what no 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 no. Because he placed a vow on the prayer. He entered into a covenant. God, if you will give me a son, I I I, I have already dedicated the son to you. Just just let everybody know I'm a woman. I can bear children. And that child is yours. God said, it's a damn deal. And when the boy came, look at how she fulfilled her vow to God. You understand? How long did Samuel live with the parents? All his life, he grew up in the house of God under the prophet Eli. So he did not even have emotional attachment to the mother. You understand? And after that, look at how many children Hannah had. Are you getting what I'm saying? The, the rabbi was teasing her. Hey, hey, now I have two children. I have twins. I have three plays. This. And then, you know how so women can make your heart bleed. And God gave Hannah one. The first one, Samuel. And Samuel was more than having a, a thousand sons. Did you see the kind of person the man that God became? Can the rabbi compare all his children to him? No way. That is why you don't have to worry. Just, just begin to love God. Begin to live for him. Let your prayer, you pray a lot because of your love for God. You want God to make this happen for you. So you will be relevant to his house. So you will be relevant to his servant. So you will stand with the servant to carry out the mission. Let God see that in your heart. Let's not be a people that we satisfy all our needs and then we now begin to. No, no, no. When you do that, you just live at the best drops because it's merciful. But you want the showers? It's not for everyone. The showers of His blessing. You see how we sing it? Showers of blessings. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drop right as are falling. Meant for the showers, we plead. You don't just plead the showers. There are things you do, and the window is open over you. May God open heavens over you. Amen. May God open the heavens over you. Amen. May God open the heavens over you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So loving God or, uh, 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 is proven in our service. And serving God is with the heart, not the hand. In other words, it is your nature before you perform it. You, you understand? You are in love with God. It is in your nature to love Him. And then your hands will perform. Your hands will perform. So your nature, when God looks at you, what kind of a person does He see? That's the one we should go home with. When God looks at you, what does He see? What kind of a person? That's easy. We can't waste our time going to church and doing all kinds of things. And when God looks into our heart, He's not pleased. God forbid. You understand? God forbid. But when God looks into our heart, He must be pleased because of the kind of people we are, what He sees in us. Like He said about uh, David, I have found David, my servant. May God say that about us Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so you're watching me from the comfort of your home. 
that you know you haven't given your life to our Lord Jesus Christ, and you want to give your life to Him because He's the only one true Savior of the world. If you haven't accepted Jesus, you are lost. If you haven't accepted Jesus, the Bible says if you pass away without Him, you will end up in the lake of fire. It is true. It's not a myth. Don't let any devil make you think it's a lie. And Jesus is not is the only way. There is not like there are many ways to God, and Jesus is one of them. He is the one and only way to the Almighty. God, the Almighty Elohim, will not accept and have relationship with anyone outside Jesus Christ. That's the truth. And so today you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. With all your heart, pray this prayer with me. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word that has come to me. Today I believe that Jesus came and died and rose again for me. I also accept that I'm a sinner. I come to you today as a sinner. I ask you to forgive me all my sins. Today with all my heart, with all my strength, I receive and accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Father, that I'm born again. Thank you that I'm a member of your kingdom now. I receive grace to walk with you to the end, and not just to walk with you, but to love you above everything. Thank you and thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray for these precious ones. We commit them into your wonderful, glorious hands. We pray, Father, that you will plant them under your servants wherever they are. That through your servants you will raise these precious ones and what everything about their lives will bring glory to the name of our Lord Jesus. Anything about the devil against them, any finger of the devil, now by the blood it is forbidden. It is destroyed in Jesus' name. And we pray that Jesus will be glorified in every area of their lives. We celebrate their salvation with heaven. And we say thank you, Father, for saving us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.